Hi guys, this is GSNOM.com and I'm here with the unboxing of the famous Oppo Find X3 Pro 5G. The device was unveiled recently and is the first phone to come with a microscope 60x magnification camera. Now aside from that, it's got a special design, they're calling it the crater design on account of the fact it looks a bit like a volcano with this domed area here. It's quite beautiful I have to say even though it has drawn comparisons with the iPhone 12 Pro with this camera area. The price is pretty steep, 1149 euros, but the beauty is there. Now aside from the fact that we have a crater camera, a microscope camera, there are also special ringtones composed by the famous Hans Zimmer, you know him from the Dark Knight series, Interstellar or things like Gladiator and other famous works. So the Find X3 series has been both experimental and uh, flagship level as far as the specs are concerned and this is their best one yet it has a snapdragon 888 cpu inside but it's an unboxing so let's see what's inside the box first here we have a, a black case which should contain this one it's a protective case with extra grip and believe me you need it the phone is quite slippery interesting cutouts here which actually reveal the quantity of modules and sensors at the back side now here you can see the manual and a variety of other extras like the metal key used to access the slots and this little fellow here which is probably a card with some extras uh, oppo international warranty service travel worry free it's a nice service to have okay so that's about it inside this little black box here i wrongly called it the case before not the case uh, and here is the hefty charger as usual for oppo they're offering us the best of the best it's a usb a connector here and the promise of 65 watt charging it's basically the same one which i unboxed recently with the oppo reno 5 5g and here we have a cable which is pretty thick goes from usb c to usb a and finally surprise surprise there are companies still offering us headphones this is a pair of regular headphones with a USB-C connector and the same design that has been borrowed from the Apple AirPods for half a decade maybe. Okay, uh, with the OCD kicking in, I'm trying to put everything back inside. And let's focus on the phone. It's a thing of beauty, but at the same time a thing of fragility. So let's take good care of it. So let's talk about the design. There's glass at the front side, gently curved on the sides, aluminum in between the two panels. And this panel at the back side is built from a singular slab of glass. It's a true craftsmanship, I have to admit it. And the way the camera domes and looks like a crater is truly amazing and it definitely steals your glance. Believe it or not, in spite of the glossiness of the back, it doesn't draw as many fingerprints as you'd expect. The device is also IP68 certified. We have a Gorilla Glass 5 protection at the front side. And uh, well, once again, it's pretty slippery, but the buttons are pretty responsive. It's also a pretty long and narrow phone with curvature, especially at the front and also a bit at the back side. They're calling it a space age design and that's also its inspiration. By the way, Crash Bandicoot has just debuted. Now, if you want measurements, it's 8.26 millimeters in thickness and it weighs a decent 193 grams. The screen you're seeing here, well, to be honest, I actually did some research. This 6.7 inch AMOLED LTPO panel should be pretty much the same with the one you saw on the OnePlus 9 Pro. The resolution is there, Quad HD+, there's 120Hz refresh rate, 1 billion colors, HDR10+, and it's an adaptive refresh rate going down to 5Hz when need be and you need to save some battery. The contrast is 5 million to 1. Now, aside from those, uh, we go inside the phone and we find the famous CPU that crowns all the flagships out there not shown properly here, but rather here. It's a Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 together with 12 gigs of LPDDR4, excuse me, LPDDR5 RAM. Okay, so the CPU is Snapdragon 888. And uh, in the system area, you can see the 12 gigs of LPDDR5 RAM, coupled with 256 gigabytes of storage of the UFS 3.1 variety, so the best of the best. What's interesting is that the phone only has one configuration, 12 gigs and 256, no micro SD, no other versions, and uh, I would say, from what I know, there are two colors here, there's blue matte, 
and glossy black. So this one uh, reflects the light and the blue one rejects it. Uh, it's not uh, as glossy. Okay, and we're back. Now we've talked about the RAM, the CPU and so forth. Uh, I think it's time we also discussed other aspects like, uh, for example, uh, the battery. It's a 4500 mAh unit with 65 watt wire charging, 30 watt wireless charging and believe it or not there's also 10 watt reverse wireless charging. Basically you can put here a pair of headphones, another phone, uh, a watch and it will be charged up. On well, the connectivity front, uh, what we've got here is a device capable of 5G, as you probably expected already, as well as Wi-Fi 6E, which is all the rage right now, a Bluetooth 5.2, GPS dual band and NFC dual antenna, which is something you don't see every day. At the bottom you have an USB-C 3.1 port and one of the speakers. We have stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos technology. In the punch hole here, you can see a 32 megapixel selfie camera which I've encountered on quite a few Oppo phones over the past year. And here comes the boom, the backside, which includes these two fellows. These are two 50 megapixel cameras. It's the first time I'm seeing a phone which has two 50 megapixel cameras. One of them is the wide one and the other one is the ultra wide one. They have the same sensor, Sony IMX766, and the main one has optical image stabilization combined with electronic image stabilization and also omnidirectional phase detection autofocus. Now, aside, aside from uh, these two babies and the ultra wide camera with the free form lens, which is also present on the OnePlus 9 Pro, just as a side mention, we also have a 13 megapixel telephoto camera, which should be this one here, with 2x optical zoom and 5x hybrid zoom. My favorite, and I think everybody's favorite, is this one here. It may sound like a modest 3 megapixel macro camera, but in fact it's a microscopic camera with a ring flash around it. And this is the dual LED flash for your regular flash needs. Uh, we also have what I think is a microphone here. And well, this is pretty much it. You're going to take macros with the ultra wide camera at 4 centimeters. We have 10 bit videos and you can only shoot 4K here. There's no love for 8K. 4K at 60 frames per second and there are also some special features here like the there are 8 autofocus points on each pixel. That's one of the things to remember here. And the freeform lens, as I mentioned before, decreases uh, distortions which are basically a staple of the ultra-wide capture. Now we're running on Android 11 with color OS 11.2 on top. It's pretty minimalistic and basic. Uh, Oppo doesn't add too much. They're not fond of bloatware and things like that. They're keeping it pretty clean. We also have a special sidebar which they offer. Uh, let's see if we can actually find it. It's a floating bar which can be repositioned and it should help you with your multitasking needs. It keeps close the screen recorder, screenshot, screen translator and we can add more. Now I want to of course show you the camera interface and we have quite a few options here. There's the AI with scene enhancement. There's also this area here where we can shoot 50 megapixel videos. There's a portrait mode and there's a more section with panorama stickers Export, microscope, dual view video, movie and text scanner. Here we have the video section where you can see the resolutions 720p, 1080p and 4K and the night mode. Of course, you won't get out of this video without seeing me use the microscope. Now, I'm pressing here microscope. This is the uh, ring flash which has been activated. It's lit up now. And let's see a few subjects. Okay, so let's take them one by one. First of all, we have this uh, mineral tree. And you have to get really close or use the 2x zoom to get it right. You definitely have to have steady hands. It will also help if you're doing that on a flat surface. Oh, that's impressive. Here we go. And this is it. This is it. Okay, so this is one of the results. You're definitely seeing up close to the mineral and its imperfections. This is a leaf. We should be able to see its many intricate textures. This is a first generation microscope camera, so there may be some hits and misses. I think you can already tell that this is a imp more impressive capture. Okay, so 
I think I made it crack a little and check this out. Now this is true microscopy photography. Pretty impressive if you ask me. And we also have a gallery of some other microscopic photos I've taken. Uh, the earlier ones in the gallery. This is the mineral you saw before. This is a nut. And this is the one of the leaves that I have laying around. And this is something else. And now let's try some pixels. Okay, so we have this iPhone here with a white background. We should be able to see pixels as we usually do with a special uh, measuring tool. Here we go. Finally. This is what I'm talking about. This is what we're hoping to obtain, the pixel arrangement on my very own iPhone 11 Pro. Once again, you have to have steady hands, you have to have a steady object, and you get the best of results. This has been a pretty long unboxing. I really wanted to show you what's special about this phone. So I would say in a nutshell is the design at the back side with the crater, the microscopic camera, and of course the performance. Uh, you're going to see that there are also some interesting video features. I shot some uh, pretty nifty 10-bit um, videos, which are a bit of a landmark if you ask me. All the tests have been completed. We have selfies, we have videos. We'll be making the review pretty soon. This is from gsnron.com. It's a pricey phone, but it definitely has some interesting novelties. Bye-bye.